Well, the Auckland calling happened, and it sounds like there was things and stuff. And apparently, um, you know, I'm kind of sad Jason's not here because I feel like Jason would have something to say about people who wore a specific colored shirt at that event. <laughs> I can channel Jason for us. You can channel sweet. Jason. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like maybe you should. So I don't know if anyone can channel Jason truly and do not it justice, yeah. though. Not truly. If anybody could, maybe Mason. Maybe his own son. There's a little bit yeah. of you can tell. Like you could tell that there's gen- a genetic connection it's there such, for well, sure. And it's like it's something about his hard stances have chaos to him. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> but like you know, it's like it's just like it's like a it's like a spasm. It's almost like his hard stances are spasms. Yeah. And then he's on. And then he's on to the next thing. Yeah. It's a very but, it's a very firm power like double down stance but then it kind of just doesn't you know exist what i had time. this thought and this is the thought and i fucking go off but okay on yeah. to the next thing <laughs> <laughs> all right so so what the happened aw- so yes. what Tell okay us. explain it to the layman yeah i mean i think everybody kind of knows what happened at this point hayden missed a a clf tax when he played a card um he yep. drew off drew off his cold snap so it messed up his hand matt played an art of war drew the cards but never banished the card and then the judges somehow determined they both realized it after the fact that yeah both of them had misplayed it was two it, two things yeah one right on so it, it, it was 100 percent called over yep. yep i mean it was 100 percent one of those things like i simultaneously i get it like mental mental errors happen because like that's what mm-hmm. happens in long tournaments at the same time like watching it it's like it was butchered like 100 percent. it was a mess the resolution of it like the, the I, fixing of it i was... thought i thought the playing of it was a mess like on both oh, sides yes hayden i don't know how hayden missed channel lake frigid it's chan it's like it's on the board it's not like a weird thing where it's a frostbite that sometimes the token gets put somewhere weird it's it's clf like i things like, are happening i don't quick. know like, I, I i get it like that I, that type of thing doesn't that's yeah. not at all what concerns me because sure Right. We literally don't make Hayden could have hit a dog on his way to the tournament and it was on his brain all like there's so much shit. Like right. that I, could have just come yeah. up that could have been like thrown him off, made people miss triggers, whatever it is. That stuff I write off. Got it. Yeah. Misplays happen. I, but I, the, yeah. It just it just felt the, like yeah, it felt butchered on both sides. Like it felt bad that neither like they caught it after the fact of both directions. I just like I don't get that. I don't know. I I get, I get misplaced. Hayden was on 100%. his way, hit a dog. Matt yeah. Rogers was driving next to him. Was like, oh my god, Hayden just hit a dog. Turned, he hit a dog. So then they just had their minds. They just, they had their the minds somewhere else. Things happened, it was, right? Like, it was a mess. But happens. the thing that blows my mind, and I, I cannot come <laughs> to terms with the resolution of how Matt Rogers, in the judge's mind, was just allowed to keep all of his. It was just like, no, 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 all the cards. It's we like, can't well, decide which one we don't, it was. We don't know which one it was. God, so they just keep just, them all. Just keep them all. It's fine. What? It's like, wait. Yeah. How, what? So we're not going to like... There's Tell this, you what happened. The judge on the way to the tournament hit a dog. Hit a dog, yeah. And exactly was, <laughs> was distracted. <laughs> just not just out of his, out of his just, zone, man. Just wasn't there. I, you know, And you know, I'm not going to lie. I, I actually get more annoyed... Or to use a word my dad like, I get more perturbed about the fact that it happens. It happened like in Auckland, in New Zealand, the home of flesh and blood. James White was probably within shouting distance. Jason Chung was probably standing around somewhere. You've got the most experienced flesh and blood players in the world in terms of just raw time spent playing the game, right? Probably because of their Mm -hmm. head. And somehow, amongst all of that, the logical choice was he keeps all the cards. Let's go with it. The thing is, is if it can happen, you could take it for that, right? You could just be frustrated. Be like, well, how could this happen? This is the place. It's like someone's phone not working at Apple. Like, as like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, it yeah. happens. Or you could look at it and say, it happens. That happens there. So maybe I shouldn't be a dick about it when it's happening in Joe Schmoesville in a Louisiana 
fucking pro quest. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'll allow two. it. At a, I'll I'll allow it at a pro quest <laughs> because at a pro quest we're talking about a pro quest where stuff happens and you have a lot of new players. This is the calling Auckland at like one of the top tables where people are playing for a top eight position, and the resolution was one hundred percent incorrect. And one of oh, the worst sorry, judge I rulings. We're talking about the playing again, not. The, oh no 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 no! I I'm, yeah, I was talking about the playing. Oh like, no no! Don't no. be like yeah. When someone misplays like that, if it's happening at that level, at that you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, no. Again, judges I, judges at that event should probably be like real tight. You know. Yeah. Or if you have a question about it, maybe you know, ask some somebody. Pe- knowledgeable people within. I I, I would be curious. Not not for the sake of like a witch hunt, but I'd just be curious about like the level of the judge that made that call and if there was more questions. I, I have to imagine that like the head judge was brought in for that because you it seemed to. like it was a difficult thing to resolve. Yeah. Like that's not something that like uh, some, you know, level two ju- or level one judge or whatever is gonna be sitting there like thinking for fifteen minutes, like, well, let's do it this way. I'm not gonna talk to anyone higher than me this whole time. So I mean I have to imagine that it was called and brought I, in. And if that's the yeah, case, I, I there has there has to be rationale. I would be so curious to like look in the in the system and see like what the rationale for that resolution was. They were on their it way. They, it was emotional it distress. Has to exist. It was well, emotional it has distress. To, the thing is is that like knowing how the system works and how you have to report every decision point. Yeah. Like Someone somewhere wrote down what the rationale for that decision is. Yeah, and I'm not gonna like dig for it because honestly, I don't I don't care that much. But like it it exists out there. We're really curious to like know like yeah. It what's why. weird what's weird to me is that what came out of it was like an IP two on both sides. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't understand that rationale where it's like let them keep two cards like because. A one card in Guardian is massive because he played Terra Sunder into Choke Slam as a result mm-hmm. of having an extra card. He doesn't you can't afford Terra Sunder and also Choke Slam. So he got two cards from Hayden's and a bunch of damage through, right? Like that's what so so it's like mm-hmm. it's it's very one card in flesh and blood is a lot. It's twenty five percent of your hand size. Yeah. It, it's very significant. And I just I don't know. I it's moments like that where I don't I just I don't get it. I don't understand how anyone comes to that solution. I don't think a local judge would ever come to that solution because I'm pretty sure any Tom Dick or Harry who's taken a judge test knows that I- incorrect in, like when when you have unknown information that you a card gets added to your hand and it's extra, one of the first things on the, the judges exams and stuff, they it's like from the lowest level of judge exams it, t- it they tell you what to do, which is just show your opponent the card. They pick one card, they put it top or bottom. You keep the rest. Like, isn't that the resolution to any time someone draws an extra card? Pretty much. Um, yes, I'm trying to. Well, that's that's for the drawing, right? But I'm right. trying to think of like what, why, wh- I can't think of anything. But like, on my brain is reeling trying to come up with why this was different. Res- yeah, why this got resolved, not like correctly and why it got anyway. resolved unintuitively this right yeah the intuitive yeah resolution of this right right i it's it's just it's Part so bizarre wonders if like just like with pressure and like what was happening and trying to resolve it quickly like they just you know how you can make a, a split second decision and 20 minutes later look back and be like wow that was where the fuck was my head at like that was not the decision to make yeah like, I, part of me wonders if it was just like that heat of the moment type thing because I get that, but I don't know. I just think I some know. sometimes it's weird to me when judge calls seem, and I understand there's like a pressure of a moment, whether you're a player or a judge or whatever. There's always those moments where mm-hmm. things go wrong, but I guess in my head I also just think you know that's like a classic situation of you know if if you can't handle the pressure of the moment to make that judge call maybe you shouldn't be a judge i don't know it's like i get yeah, i like that's, that's valid too like that's always I my argument I don't know is that's what happened but i can't think of what else could have happened i know well and i'm i'm more saying in terms of if it was a, if a judge call at that moment 
can't be handled correctly, what are you doing in that position? Like that, that's the thing that always comes to my, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is that there has to be, and I understand like the judge system is new and there's not a ton of people with a lot of experience or an an abundance of experience to prove. And you have to give Mm -hmm. people an opportunity at some point. But if it was their first time head judging, maybe you need a better system where you don't just go like, you know what? This is is like, I guess it might have been their first time head judging, but like especially at that level, like even stateside at like the level events, like the battle hardens and stuff. Yeah, those those are people judging those that are level twos that are, you know, it's they've they have been high up in the judge ranks for multiple events. Right, so I can hundred percent. This happening in Auckland is going to be like a first timer, you know. Right, and I, I'm. I guess I'm more saying if if it's the, if this was their first shot at a calling, th- and right. they said, "Hey, you're going to head judges calling. This is your chance. Your one shining moment. This is your. This is the pinnacle of your judge career at this point." Yeah. yeah, you don't. You don't just let them do that and not have someone there supporting it. And if you do, there's a flaw in the system because that's the equivalent of being yep. like, "Hey, man, you were just promoted to a manager. Like, we now you can close the store." You don't like the first night that they do that and they go through the process of like closing the registers and counting them down and then locking up the doors and setting the security system. The first night someone is promoted, you don't immediately put them in charge of it. Just go, hey, man, I know you've seen it done before. You're good. I'm heading out. No, you leave somebody Mm -hmm. who's experienced doing it there to just kind of be around in case there's a scenario that arises where they're like, hey, you know what? I I know I've seen someone do the, the the security code nine times you know, 900 times, but I, I just forgot what's the order again. You need someone there. So they're not doing that. So, you know, it's like, they didn't have a bunch yeah. of random level zero judges supporting this rant, this person. How did somebody else not step and be like, Hey, I don't mean to you overstep my bounds. Keep, probably yeah. should get to keep like an extra card, but yeah, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. that's our thoughts on that. I don't, I don't, we yeah, don't know what happened. I'm curious what yeah, other people think of anyone, situation. anyone that was there. If you want to comment and let us know, kind of like what was being mm-hmm. talked about or what you heard, like, because I don't, I don't even think I have access to that system anymore. I but. would, um, I would though, like, if someone could send me, I'm, I'm looking for a line on some New Zealand Art of Wars, uh, pay one, draw two. That would be dope. they. They seem really yep. good. Uh, the ones that I we bought here stateside, um, my, I have to Just banish a card. Yeah, like yeah, to draw the the draw two mode. Mine says banish a card draw two um and it's attack action so i don't know maybe, maybe the awkward ones are printed differently there's like a translation difference such a dick all right <laughs> <laughs> to be all fair right. kale we can move on from this we're so, beating this horse pretty bloody sure i so i would like to acknowledge that kale did point out and i i will 100 percent agree that we have to decide and i want i'm just curious what everybody else's feedback what is more powerful a new zealand art of war or a u.s printed um What's like blue, um, deep blue, where it's oh, like yeah. the instant speed deep blue. Like which yeah, one's more powerful? Speed. You know. Yep. It's it's I a think that in, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's got to be the art of war. Got to be, be the art of war. More cards. What was, the, what was the UK fuck up? I can't remember that one. The entire event. That's uh, just just all nationals. Well, I don't know. I'm like I don't know specifically. Yeah, I don't know if there was. I try to remember what some of the places. <laughs> I can probably find Kale's post, but yeah, yeah. Kale yeah, no, mentioned Kale mentioned the UK, but I don't remember a specific moment. I just feel like the whole thing was kind of a. I just remember a catastrophe. It was like the whole thing, more of a general thing. flub. Yeah, just throughout. Right. What was the error? His name was Matt Folks. That was the error. He was just uh, erroring all well, over. We're, we're past that. We're not going to go back to that. I'm not going to bring that up here. Kicking that one again. No. Um. <laughs> yeah. So we've got, I mean, we, there's plenty of other stuff to talk about too, not necessarily in flesh and blood, but we've got like announcements. I, I at some point, we're going to have to address Shatterpoint. That's got to happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I think, I think we should cover, let's, let's we talk. Gotta cover spoilers. Yeah. Right, for flesh and blood. We got to go through that. I'm just thinking through like, because you didn't send out show notes this week, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants. It'll probably be we more. We never do. Yeah, I'm we panicked. never. I'm, I'm panicked right now, not having a set in stone path forward. <laughs> yeah. So let's hit those spoilers. Let's do it. So Uzuri split switchblade. Is that how you say your yeah. name? I I don't Is know Uzuri. I Uzuri? assume it's Uzuri. Yeah. I don't know. I that's one of those things that I actually wish 
that um, LSS would do sooner because I feel like there are names that sometimes people butcher for a while or right you get or a couple different James pronunciations. Said, I mean, James said, though, he's like, pronounce things how you want to pronounce them. Sure, because 100%. Don't care. So it's like, okay, and that if that's his stance, then I understand the no pronunciation guide. Sure, but at the same time, I would like to know how it's pronounced for like how does james pronounce it because personally i would like to pronounce it that way just for for my because it's like the same as if i heard an interview with tolkien and he's mm -hmm. and he said legalos i would be like oh my god i've said legolas wrong this entire time i'm an idiot even if he said mm -hmm. pronounce it how you want to pronounce it, i'd be like no i need to correct it you're the creator praise the maker i should honor your <laughs> words mm -hmm. but that's just i don't know that maybe it's just me yeah Tell me if I'm an idiot there and I'm over complicating names. It's it's probably true. So we have Uzuri Switchblade, which the name I like I like the name with the hero effect. Um yeah. they continue to stay it's, it's, it's on funny. the nose. Yeah, it's yeah. on the nose. So she is a four intellect, forty health, assassin hero. Once per turn, attack reaction, banish a card from your hand face down. Turn the card banished this way face up. If it's an attack action card with cost two or less, put target attacking card with stealth from the active chain link on the bottom of its owner's deck. Then put the banished card onto the active chain link as the attacking card. So a couple yeah. things I think we need to point out. First off, you can you can banish a card that's not an, at an attack. It just says if it is, you resolve the rest of the text. Yep. You... The card that you put with stealth has to be the active chain link. You can't do some shysty stuff where you like play a stealth card, play something else, then swap the stealth card for something. I don't know why you'd want to do that because it doesn't really work unless you put like a card that says defense reactions can't be played to this chain link. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, and then the last thing is unless they absolutely ignore all precedents for the word play. Yeah the card is not being played and therefore should not get its when played effect. So if you this, swap it with an hero, E-Strike, it's a five. Gonna get, yeah, yeah. this hero, like you said before we got on here, is going to get noobed for sure. Mm. There's going to be some people yeah. banishing E-Strikes and playing them and then it yeah, try to give it and, go yeah. again. That that's I feel like that's the one that people are going to try and be sneaky about is like banish an E-Strike play it and then banish like bottom deck a card to give it go again and think they're being right. cute and then someone's gonna go uh yeah it's just a five man it, it's you're just, just a, swapping it yeah bud. like you're not just, yeah. just just swapping it so can i swap it and take the card back but not play something because that's yeah. like a dragon really ball interesting really interesting use of stealth have we seen other things that utilize stealth yet no so everything it's i think that we've seen stealth so far just targets cards with stealth is what they they kind of inferred. right right yeah. what i'm saying mm -hmm. is there have i missed something that's a different utilization of that keyword stuff no the, right now it's yeah. just the keyword mm -hmm. right it just says yeah. stealth on it yeah. this is the first thing we've seen just yep. confirming yep. yeah okay as far as i know i, I mean i like it so far yeah unless something cool. sneaky came out that was super stealthy no oh, um that would, be that would be that'd actually be we should have just released our spoiler and not said anything just had it exist maybe like, we should do that and not tell people that it's going to be at 10 30 on sunday that all yeah. three of them all three of them and um like, are we it's kind they're kind of yeah no I'm not, we can't say anything no right? can't say anything. i want to be like i want to be like you know how we always get like the three different cards yeah yeah i'm not gonna say anything more we're fine <laughs> No, I I like this. I like how they're choosing to use stealth. I like how they're mm -hmm. choosing to swap things around. I think it's super interesting. And I'm curious because... So one of the cards that we got kind of pseudo-spoiled, but it wasn't really a spoiler. It was more just like an information link um, or leak was that Come to Fight is going to be in this set. Yeah. And something that's really interesting is one, one of the issues that sometimes assassin has so far is that with arachne it's hard to trigger the boots consistently like and get things mm -hmm. to hit um and she has an opportunity to do some really interesting plays where you can pre-buff some of these like three and four power cards and when you play a card to the chain link right you uh, you can do some interesting interactions where maybe you put a card with dominate out so you you know play come to fight 
put a card with dominate out and then swap it for something that you know is going to hit because they now they have to have a defense reaction you're like forcing a defense reaction they can't just block an additional three or you can play there's one of the cards that came out with her actually has um it's the zero for three with dominate and so which is really cool because that is what feeds that engine because you play that out they can only block with one you do her attack reaction swap in a six power that the yep. block stuff's already done so now yeah like you said they need to need to have that defense reaction and and to be fair if they're if they're blocking if you attack right so if if you think about it in the sense that they can have a defense reaction from or they defend with a three from hand right that covers I've got a question yeah, yeah about resolution order mm-hmm. be, and maybe this might be a dumb question because i have not truly like inspected everything because this stuff just dropped like right before we recorded yeah but would you be able to attack react with like a razor reflex on a zero or one cost and then swap the attack for like a command and conquer and have that attack reaction still apply um i would have to because you're swapping the attack it doesn't say you're making a new chain link and the attack reaction plays to the chain link that's that's where that's what I'm questioning. But it right says now. target card, right? Don't don't doesn't like razor and stuff. I'm I'm Is looking it, it up right now. Card? Um, okay. target sort of target attack action card with cost one or less. So if you reactioned the card on the chain and then swapped it with her thing, you would just lose that the reaction. That card would pull the. It would have the plus. Yeah, got it. Got it. The reaction that, that makes yeah, the that makes sense. Thing. My brain was going weird places, so thank you for <laughs> helping me sort through that. I see. I thought you were asking. I thought you were going to ask about um, being able to defense react the before if, a card if they resolved. Defense react and then you swap, or if you swap and then mm-hmm. it like so. I swap and then they try to defense react before the card resolves. Like, so before Command and Conquer gets swapped in, do you have a window to play a defense reaction to the chain link prior to their, their attack reaction resolving fully? So if you think they're going to CNC you or something stupid and you can defense react, if they trigger her attack action, her attack reaction, do you get a window well, it's, prior? It's all a part of that same reaction, though. So you get to play and resolve your reactions before, unless they have an instant. I right. would argue yep. that, like, if they hadn't, if you have, like, an instant that, but that's not, they don't have defense reactions that are instant. So, yeah. So, so they would, you would, the only one I could think of would be, like, Oasis. Um, but then Oasis not, doesn't, but that doesn't, Conquer doesn't stop Oasis. Anyways. Right. But, like, Exude Confidence says you can't stop. You can't play instance, um, but it doesn't matter because you won't know that it's exude confidence until it's revealed and played and placed into the chain link. And at that point, the card does exist, and you should. I don't know if you'll get a priority window there, because no. what you would do is you would say like you're, pl- you're, you're, you're triggering her ability, triggering the defense reaction right. or the attack reaction, attack reaction, and then they would get that priority window. window. Yep. Right. And then if they allow it to resolve, then the cards get swapped. And at no point yes. until that no card is after in the they link. allow it to yeah. resolve, and because they don't have that information yet, then it would get swapped in because her full re- yeah. attack reaction after being allowed to play, having priority pass back to her, would fully resolve before again the a priority would window yeah. would have priority again yep. to then do something else. Which is so yeah, that wouldn't be yeah, that wouldn't be something you can do. Which is mainly just interesting because it stops oasis on like an exude i mean obviously it doesn't stop oasis on other cards but it does stop oasis on an exude because they can't target the card when it's face down they don't know what the card is right you can't choose a face down card it's hidden information well, for what interaction sorry for the so if you're... so they banish they banish a card they, it's yep. exude confidence but you yep. don't know that because it's face down. Missouri knows that but the defender yep. with oasis doesn't know that you they can't should... you can't trigger oasis because you don't know what you don't know what the card is, and Oasis has to trigger a card, but it's not known information if it's face How down. How is Oasis right? worded? Oasis says target card. Stop damage from target. So it's a specific. It's specifically targeting uh, a I card, not it. just the next damage. Got it. Got it. Yep. So. Yeah. But no, it, it's to me. It's just interesting. That's like a, it's a cool design space that they've built. Yeah, because that's be from a. So it says prevent the next target four damage source. that would be dealt to target hero this turn by a source of your choice. So yeah, can you can the source be a chain link? 
can the source be a face down card? I would assume no. Yeah, it would not. be it would be funnier if you could because like I would love it if people that's that's one of those like as they expound the game yeah and they'll have to just layers clarify. to things they might they might update the rules reference to say that underneath sources like it could be permanents weapons right heroes, yeah chain links so like you could theoretically if they come out with it say that. You know, you can opt to make this chain link a source when you're choosing sources. Yeah. And then, yeah. then it would allow this. But like right now I don't think that there's a precedent for it. Yeah. It's it's just interesting. I like the I like the design space because she doesn't you don't read that text and think it's gonna be problematic. Now obviously that doesn't always guarantee it's not, but it has some very important information in it that makes me feel much better about it, which is mm-hmm. it defines a card cost. So you can't just pick any card and use it as um, the hidden card. So if there's ever a, a an incredible three cost, like they can, they can lock a completely mind bog like a busted assassin card from her by just making it three cost, and it instantly right. means she right. can't sneak it in. Right. So that's that's really good to me. That's good design space. Also, it only targets cards with stealth in the combat chain, chain yeah combat so chain. yeah so they can't you can't just be like oh ho, ho, i play e-strike draw a card and then flash in something with go again so they can always just limit stuff yeah the thing is is like I, I feel like they're gonna have they've already shown like some decent stealth options that are gonna be yeah stacks that are valued yeah. anyways but, but the I cards mean, so far the cards with stealth on them are like zero for three in red right, which right. They, that's not which even is what you want it to be kind of yeah you want it to be a one card block, and then you just tell them you're like, "Cool, you want to do some weird stuff? That's fine. I don't care. Mm. Have fun." Because it's basically, if you think about it, that you're playing the card from your hand, and then mm. you're choosing to banish another you're, card. You're, you're negging a card. Yeah. Like so the, you're going down a card in order to get yeah. that value of the surprise or of that yeah. reaction. So, so yeah. That's... So realistically, the only way that you don't trade truly negative is if you swap in a card that costs something because then you didn't that you pitch didn't for have it. resources for yep. right yep exactly yep. so Which... you're looking at hopefully getting that i mean running a red line with a bunch of two cost attacks yeah. you're going to be swapping in but also that makes it really bad cuz the yeah. mirror then you can say mm. i th- i think interestingly enough people people will often go to the cards that they perceive are the most problematic, like bust. It's like the cards that make them feel the worst that made their butt hurt. Um, mm-hmm, for yeah. example, the first card, everybody is going to be like, ho, 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 I'm going to flash in a C and C. And you're like, yeah. And half the time yeah. it's going to suck and people are just going to let you have it. And they're not going to care. Or the first time that a Dromai sand covers you or somebody hits you with an Oasis, you're gonna be like, wow, this feels really bad. Like I did. This, this was supposed to be busted. I was yeah. supposed to be able to kick ass with this. I combo I would like I thought of with my big brain. I would like to point out that in fact the better option would be to find red cards or value cards that you can banish that have go again on them, so you can attack with a card with stealth. That's a zero for three, mm-hmm. banishing, ravenous rabble, red, swapping mm-hmm. them. And now you have a ravenous ravel that is zero for five because you don't have to reveal, and it has go again. And now, hey, guess who gets to go again? So, like, I'm just Stop saying. Thinking so much. That's like, that's so bad. It's such a bad idea. It's 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 stuff <laughs> like that to me. Like that's where the interesting interactions are going to come. Is where people find the really mm-hmm. interesting synergies that they can find some old value cards and some new cards, and they can combine it. And that's where card game players are at their best is breaking things i just hope that i really hope that lss has done a wonderful job in designing this and we have heroes that are really cool really interesting really dynamic but aren't broken because i'm tired of seeing some of these like hero abilities that just feel obnoxiously broken and it just i don't know it drives me crazy Mm -hmm. i'm kind of i'm just over like seeing some of the nonsense and excited to see something interesting speaking of new and interesting dusk till dawn the return of light and shadow i am excited i'm excited to see what they come out with man that's gonna be i hope that they 
kind of fix what they did with Monarch a little bit. Like, I hope that it's not just like more of the same with what they gave us with Monarch. Right. You know, yeah. 100%. I hope that it's like, yeah. Which I think that they easily could. I think it would be great. I'm I'm curious if we're going to get simply one hero light and one hero shadow or if they pushed it and they're going to try and give us more even if they're maybe young here give us give us two adults and young like an adult and a young Mm -hmm. of a light and adult and young shadow to replace chain and prism so now that you cards that people have that they feel really bad about owning are are playable again who has a bunch of cold foils of like everything for a hero that they can't really play. Um, I can't think of anybody. It, but then it would be very. It would be cool if maybe they did something else. Maybe brought in a different, a, a new light something and a new shadow something, and just That'd just be cool. Yeah. yeah, just a young one. See, like something dude, like a light ranger, or like a like a, yeah. a shadow. Fucking. Sh- sh- it would. Yeah, it's tough because I guess you do have to stay in like the classes say, yeah. that yeah the classes that exist yeah. just for the sake of the card pool. But you know what? You know who seems like they've always been a light warrior that they just won't give us the official card for is uh, someone who swings a sword from Solana. Her name is Dorinthia, and I don't know. <laughs> That'd be cool. I like to see. I like to see like, light the heroes get upgrades. I want to see cats who would be like a shadow ninja. You know, shadow. What about uh? What about Shadow Viscerai? Yeah, or dude, fucking Light Viscerai. Light Viscerai oh is coming God. around. He's got a redemption if, arc coming. I can it, feel it. If they wrote a redemption arc and made For Light Viscerai, Viscerai and made him like a light, light rune blade. Oh, oh. I mean, I would, mommy. I would have a hard time not picking up Viscerai at that point because I mean. Is there but any... then it would then it would be Starvo, and then we would hate it, and then it would be like, why did yeah. I this hero? I now hate this hero. I just love would... I love redemption stories are my favorite. Like the redemption, oh, they're Re- the best. Redemption stories in anything are just some of the best. the The best heroes are always the heroes who. If they made if they made Viserai like the Venom proxy, like the anti hero. Where like yeah. he has like a redemption arc and like do like what they did with the, the King in Black storyline from the comics with Viserai, dude, I would lose my fucking mind. Could that you? Would be so cool. Oh my god, could you imagine like a real, a real yin and yang flip back and forth, and they give us Shadow the, Dory, Shadow Dory, and Light god. Viserai. Oh my god, I wanted that for so long. It would just <laughs> be cool. Awesome. Like yeah, she just loses, like falls to despair because her kingdom was taken yeah she's like a young impressionable woman when it happened and like she doesn't handle it the same way bolton handles it she's just like yeah she's like oh my man my family my dad is blacksmithing and he was killed by monsters no one cared i don't know why she's got a southern accent (laughs) i mean (sighs) apparently a black blacksmith is it's a southern thing only i guess i don't know they don't have. Actually, it's funny. That might be why, because I watched some YouTube videos of blacksmiths, and I just the Southern two guy. of my favorites are Southern guys. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So it, that actually makes total sense. Thank it's a it's a logical that. connection. I'm here for you. That's I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to be here for you. So, I I'm excited. Just I'm excited that they're gonna they have an opportunity to give us replacements for two heroes that need replaced because people have cards that they can't play, and there's a chunk of cards that people open boxes. They feel really bad because they're dead cards. I'm also excited because it means that they can target two heroes who are very underrepresented and feel like they've just never had a real opportunity to be what they wanted them to be in Leviah. Yeah, with Leviah and Bolton, they both feel like very Mm -hmm. cool, very interesting heroes with super unique abilities, super unique card pools, and really fun play styles that are interesting. But they've never been able, they haven't fleshed them out. And this is a way to do that. And I, I personally, I don't know how you feel, but I don't mind the idea of these supplemental sets targeting specific things that are important. I know that that oh, fe- yeah. I, for some for some people it's going to feel a bad. Supplemental set doesn't need to blanket the whole game, right? I think a supplemental set can take like two of the bottom six heroes 
and just like give them some shit. Yeah, or it's, or it's totally reasonable. Like in this case, the living legend heroes. You can who, right, right, yeah, yeah, because mainly because it this can set a precedence maybe for next year where with all of the competitive season, it's hard not to see the potential of like Oldham and Briar possibly working their way into living legend. And this could set precedence for going draftable set supplemental that replaces the light and shadow hero that we lost to living legend draftable set. Then next year is draftable set replace Oldham and Briar and then do another draftable set. Mm -hmm. And you start to get in that cycle where they, they just replace the heroes that we lose with a supplemental set that reinvigorates a class or talent that we lost. I've sort of given up on thinking that there's going to be like a set pattern because right, like, right, they're yeah. constantly, I mean, they're constantly subverting expectations with like any sort of trying to establish some pattern. Like, I think that they're very comfortable playing it by ear where next supplemental set where they need to replace Oldham and Briar, they literally just do the heroes because there's deep enough yeah. card pools for those talents that it's like, okay, we'll mm -hmm. just do the heroes with like this set that has nothing to do with that. And that's not what we're normally going to do. But for these heroes, we don't need to release support cards I, for the new. Yeah. Like, I, maybe specializations, right? But like that's, mm -hmm. they don't need to have like some sort of. I've also really, really it. liked the idea of just doing, I, I don't mind the, the concept that, has been brought up before where maybe maybe instead of replacing in a in a set like that where to your point if you've got heroes that just need specializations and their hero in the hero cards mm -hmm. you could do it as an armory kit just just release the support the, the supplemental stuff everybody gets non-foil versions of the heroes throughout the month and then the specializations mm -hmm. are the cards that everybody gets the the versions of mm -hmm. and then you get cold foil specializations if you win so then you can pimp cold out your foil heroes, cold yeah, foil like heroes, cold foil version yeah. of heroes, and then like specializations are just handed out, and yeah. non foil are handed out. Yeah, that would be. I still think that that would have been a totally acceptable way to release the replacements for prison yeah. chain. I think yeah. that would have been totally fine. No issues. Everyone would have been fine with it. I I, I wonder imagine, if I can't I, imagine yeah. someone would be like, no, oh, you need to fucking paywall me. I wonder if the only reason that they did it in a supplemental set is because they're trying really hard to support. Maybe there's a really targeted aim to support Bolton and Leviah where they're seeing. I hope, so. seeing I hope if, that that's yeah. why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that there was already an existing rationale floating around LSS that told them they should re re release a supplemental set focused on Shadow and Light. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's, that's valid then. Obviously, include mm -hmm. the replacement heroes in that set. So yeah, and it it's it gives you an op more opportunity for lore because that's one of the challenges of the game that I think they're kind of running into is people are really hungry for lore and they really love the lore part of the game. They feel attached to their heroes, and to keep people attached to their heroes and super invested in their heroes, you have to support them, but you also have to you want to drive those storylines forward. And they I do think that's might be I've been super lore hungry in general lately. Yeah, I think maybe that's part of the reason that like in general since the christmas break and everything my my interest has waned a little bit you know mm -hmm. just because it's like i'm not you know I, I kind of am driven by that that cool info and like the yeah like i'm just listening to a shit ton of D, &D podcasts right now just because they're feeding me like awesome story driven characters and it's like yeah i mean well, and i to, to some degree that's just the nature oftentimes of gamers some people play games mm -hmm. and have zero attachment and i i get that i understand that people don't some people they, they the cards the pictures on the cards mean nothing to them they just want to win they're just power gamers and that's what they are i get that i don't totally get that because i guess my my brain doesn't 100 percent like i like to win okay i like winning don't ever get me wrong about that you'll never find me not trying to win something even if it's my worst matchup, even if I shouldn't be winning, I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what the odds say. I'm going to try and win. However, getting like getting lost in the win and losing the joy is insane to me in games. So I don't totally grasp the power gamer mentality of fun be damned. I just want to play the best thing and I don't have any mm -hmm. att attachment. I do get wanting to win. I do get trying to play better decks. Maybe you get maybe you leave a hero because the hero that you fell in love with kind of sucks and you go find a better hero and you can get attached to that mm -hmm. hero. But I think most 
gamers and most people, especially people who are maybe more casual and don't want to play it, like they don't have any sort of dreams of like, oh, I'm going to be Michael Hamilton one day. They just go, you know what? No, I, I just like playing games and I really want to do it with my friends. Most of most of us that exist just enjoy, we love things that we love and we get attached to our heroes and attached to our things. And that story and development is part of what we enjoy. Yeah. It's part of what we have fun. I, we We see it in something as dumb as Blood Bowl where you get kind of, you start to, We've played a season it's so now. So funny because that's like one of the few games where I don't give a fuck about the lore. Well, it's like, not. I could yeah, really not care about the lore. I guess I'm not. And I don't. Yeah, I don't mean the lore. I guess in that, I mean more like the attachment you get to like your team and your league when you play. You get an attachment to your characters through a different means. In yeah, the game. you start to develop characters. You have your roster and. There's this funny moment where you named a character and you really like pl- that. You're like, man, this player is so good. They've got all these good skills. I'm having a ton of fun. They just do some yeah. dumb stuff. And then something dumb happens and you roll dice bad and you re-roll those dice and they, they're bad again. And your guy dies or gets out. And you're just like, yeah. oh, you get oh my God. Like, I've, my- got, I've got so linemen are like your bulk units in the game, right? Yeah. And then you've got like your positionals. This is just for people who don't know anything about mm-hmm. Blood Bowl. Yeah, your positionals like your catchers, your throwers, your blitzers, which are like your linebackers. But your linemen are just like plebs. And I've got two old foreigners, which are basically like big werewolf dudes that are both skilled up and just crumping people. And I've got this random fucking lineman that I named Olaf Olafsson just for like a fucking meme because I was just coming up with names. But Olaf Olafsson is like fucking neck and neck with these two giant werewolf strength four dudes is like just this pleb lineman because he's randomly just getting kills like every game <laughs> he's knocking people out and it's super fun i'm gonna be so sad when he dies because olaf olafson's been like fucking pulling his weight he's like all right fucking get on my back we're going like just every goddamn game yeah it's like how i'll look and i literally won't realize until after the game and i'm looking at spp i'm like oh shit that was olaf olafson that got both <laughs> of those ko's like one in the first half one in the second half it's just it's so it's so fun to like do that type of thing and get invested in that way to eat with your team. So and if we definitely different though, it's different. It's not lore based, but you get attached. Yeah. Like there's just a natural attachment when there's the ability to have like some storylines because you start to write some of your own. And like mm-hmm. that's Jason and I played a preseason game, and he was playing a human team. I'm playing a team that throws bombs. That's right. If you've never considered Blood Bowl before, listen to the phrase that I'm saying. I, with my team, was going to throw a bomb at Jason's team and the guy that had the football. And Jason was trying to drive. And I thought to myself, I will throw my bomb and I will blow up his players and then I will steal the ball and I will use my troll to throw my little guy and I will score a touchdown in one turn. Ridiculous statements, I know. But I threw a bomb at Jason's team. And when I threw it, on the way, there was a guy who could intercept the bomb. Again, yeah. yes, you can intercept a bomb. So he had a guy that he was like, we at that point, we hadn't had named any players. We were still trying to center a roster. It's just a preseason game, trying to get the feel for our teams. And he goes, I'm going to try and pick it off with this guy. Rolls a natural six, catches that bad, but doesn't deflect it, just catches it, blows yep. himself up with the bomb. And at that moment, Jason goes, this guy's name is Steve Rogers. He, he just sacrificed himself yeah. for my team. He jumped Steve on the Rogers bomb. Rogers fucking got knocked out so many times this season. Every <laughs> game that he played, he would play a game, miss a, the next game from an injury. Then he would play a game and miss the next game from injury. Every time he was healthy, he missed the next game. Every single time without fail. Just jumping just, on those grenades, dude. Just, and it, he's just like, nah, I got this. And the, the, but it's <laughs> it was Rogers. like this hilarious storyline that mm-hmm. we all kind of laughed about every time we would be playing a league game i would be playing a league game on one table and jason's right next to me playing his league game and he'd go god steve rogers again oh my yeah. every time this guy plays a game he dies and he's so frustrated but it, it was only funny because he had the attachment to the story where he thought in his head he's like this guy's gonna be a hero for my team and instead he was the injury prone guy that you that every team in the NFL or the NBA has who's just hurt. Like you play sixteen games, he plays four, but he's getting paid like thirty million dollars to just watch most of the games. And Jason's like, Why do I even play this guy? I should just cut him. And I'm like, honestly, you probably should. But he didn't because he was like married to Steve Rogers. Like from the beginning, he just had this created this story in his head mm-hmm. of Steve Rogers, the hero for his team. And I, I, it's funny. I named so from being from Minnesota, 
it was it was applicable but i named one of my valkyries which are like on the norse team it's one of basically the running backs and uh i named one of them her her name is adrienne peterson so like you know in honor of adrian peterson and in true adrian peterson fashion got injured like second game of the season first second game of the season got her armor busted down has a niggling injury and has like gotten injured like two or three more times throughout the season and i won't cut her because like she still scores she's still a workhorse but like just always like a step away like now as she's got her armor busted down it's just easier to injure she's always just like a step away from being hurt again which is so fitting for like the years that i watched vikings football and was just like when's it gonna happen (laughs) <laughs> when's it gonna happen so it's i'm like yeah i can't i can't cut her i could cut her and just get a new valkyrie but it's too fitting yeah I, thematic and that's that's the beauty of games is that you start to feel a connection with something in the game and that's what draws you back a lot of times is that connection i i always play games with people and one of the things that i always talk about personally is i like games that are that have they feel like they have a good story like i like to actually read in the rule book what the game is supposed to be about and i want to feel like the game has some connection to that story and then i want to feel like that i I want a feeling of like this aesthetically pleasing experience when i'm also playing the game because that you that those combination of things to me Mm -hmm. have this feeling of like you get to be it feels more immersive than if I'm just because if I'm playing a board game and it's all about the win conditions and going well if I go here and I get this resource and I go there and I get that resource and then I build this thing and then I get those resources and I build this thing then I win the game because I get the most points I lose it like to me it loses the plot at that point I'm just doing a bunch of math and I'm able to go one plus two equals three cool I win I know that I know that I have said this and that you've been like yeah I'm game (laughs) <laughs> but like I need your help because I I'm trying to herd cats a little bit. I want to run just a one shot D and D session so badly because I have never been more confident in my life that you would enjoy D and D. That someone yeah. would enjoy D and D as much as I know you would, because it is strictly just it's group storytelling. There's rules. There's like your your structure for what you can and can't do. But within that structure, you can just go fucking nuts. And, like, the way that I was always DM'd and the way that I like DMing is very, like, very story-driven. Just, mm-hmm. like, I my goal as the DM is to help, tell, help you tell an amazing story for your characters and fucking explain why you're such big heroes while keeping you honest, right? Like, I'm not going to let you do yeah. crazy wild shit. But it's, like, I'm not going to get in your way if you're doing something cool. You got a cool idea, like, and it's within the rules. Let's fucking do it, man. That's exciting. I hate the like, DM versus the player mentality. Yeah. But, like, you guys, I just fucking get them over here. Blake, help me. I know. When it comes up, just be like, dude, we should do this. Just, like, when I say, hey, you guys want D&D this weekend? You should then comment and be like, hey, guys, we should totally do this. I know, because like, we know, blast. we know you've got me and Pat, or not me and Pat, me and Chris at this point. Like, we've got. Yes. It's Which, two of honestly, us. my first D&D session was a two player, and we were just, it was a random one shot where we were in, like, a Cthulhu y setting. Like, uh, what are they, who's the author? Why can't I think of that? Uh, Lovecraft? That. Lovecraft. It's like yeah. a Lovecraftian, like, rain, like, or like the Industrial Revolution era. Oh, industrialization yeah, yeah. era of like England, mm-hmm. New England, all that shit. But yeah, no, it was fucking crazy. We were pistol wielders. It was awesome, but super easy to do, like a freeform story. Anyways, I digress. I just yeah. thought of that when you were talking about the things that you like in a game, and I'm just like, God damn it, fucking do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do. I love, and I mean that's part of the thing that drew us into Fab and drew me into fab was the fact that it feels story driven it's i i want to feel a connection to the games that i play i want to feel a connection to the community that i play with it's one of the reasons that you know it's hard not to love chris and fab and hard not to love chris in any game when he's like i want to play blood bowl and then all of a sudden he's like yeah i think we should start a facebook and do things i'm like yes yes just let chris do it if chris is going to do it things are going to be so much better cuz he yeah, knows his, his organizational ability yes his ability to just and and his his desire to just see community is such a cool thing to watch because a hundred percent. I, if, if 
you exist in a fab community and you think, how can I make my fab community better? Chris is the is the shining, glowing example of how to do things correctly. And a lot of it has to do with this sense of a commitment. He loves the community, not because of what they do for him, but because he loves what it what it is, what it creates and how this group of players becomes an awesome community. And huge shout out to him. He probably would hate that I would ever bring it up. But every month to encourage people to go play through these like winter months where sometimes it's hard to get people going and get him out and stuff. Chris has been out of his own collection and his own things, been putting stuff up and said, Hey, here's the post of the month. I have this, like he had the proclamation of rec of what is it called? The proclamation of something, the, the card that judges promo that goes with, um, type EP. I can't remember the name of the card, but I pee pee. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, but like he, he did that one and then he did yeah. the, the like scroll yep. last month. And he says, Hey, if you play in an armory, just tell me where you played in the date and I'll put you in a draw, a raffle. And then mm -hmm. every, for every name that goes in there and everything that he goes, he puts all the names in a thing, generates it, picks a number, boom, there's the person who gets the thing and he gives it to him for free. And then this month he puts up like a metal Kyloria signed by freaking Steve Argyle. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Right, like this is way over the top, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he Loves doesn't. It, he doesn't do that it. Is part of his hobby for him. A part of his hobby is creating like a wonderful community, and He's doing that. yeah, and but, beyond grateful for it because he he has created such magnificent communities to be a part of, mm -hmm. and feel connected to. Like it's it's that sense of connection to the community where you know every time you go to a Minnesota event, if you've just been around, it's every event is like cheers. It's everybody knows everybody's name. Everybody knows everybody and sees everybody is happy to see people they haven't seen in a while. It's incredible. Absolutely beyond mm -hmm. incredible. Absolutely. But, All right. Any other games that we want to talk about before we, I, before we call it? Do you want, you don't want to talk about Shatterpoint. I'm getting that vibe. I'm getting that vibe. I brought it up. I'm getting the vibe that you're not ready to bring. No, it no, no. I mean, I'm not. I, I am excited about Shatterpoint. I'm mainly excited. I, I just want to... I've been very excited to see the rules, specifically. Yes. Now that we're seeing more about, like... Now that we've seen squad building and missions and what... um What was the last thing that we just saw? The last uh, release? Like notes. the movement. The movement. How movement's going to work and then... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Now that we've seen like that stuff, I'm, I am very confident. Oh, and the whole activation order thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the way that that stuff has been announced and released, I'm like, I am very confident that this game is what I was hoping it would be, which is super exciting because mm -hmm. you're always hesitant. And Star Wars, for some reason too, always makes me nervous because there's so many bad Star Wars bad games Star too, Wars games. Yeah. That's like, God damn! I really hope they don't screw this one up because I love these models and it looks cool. And it seems like they haven't. I so. yeah. Anything people was were really upset about that activation order thing, though. Yeah, I people are upset about everything all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like if you guys aren't aware, um, Atomic Mass Games, the company that does Marvel Crisis Protocol, is releasing their own Star Wars skirmish game. Skirmish, yeah. Yeah. Not, true. True skirmish. Of, yeah, they kind of got grandfathered over because Asmodee is the parent company for them. And they Asmodee basically took Legion and X Wing and gave it to Atomic Mass Games. They took it from FFG, gave it to Atomic Mass Games. So it's, it was never really their game. So they've been apparently developing this for their game that follows more the MCP model, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not just a Star Wars reskin, which is nice too because yeah. the mechanics seem super cool. Yeah, I'm I'm just genuinely excited. Anytime something Star Wars comes up, um, mm -hmm. I was very annoyed by FFG. Not nothing new. Spoiler alert: that's not <laughs> anything that if if you've known me or listened to us ever, you know that that you know our feelings There's on a FFG. Deep, deep rooted hatred. Have it, you watched the new Mando yet? I have. I'm watching it. Hopefully tonight after. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So, um, but. When they released, I was so annoyed when they released a thing up with Luke and Vader clashing lightsabers. And I was like, oh my God, is there a card game? And I'm not going to lie. I was 
immediately like I'm not doing that because it's FFG. But then Star Wars was going to go on cards, and I was like, no doubt about it, ready to get hurt again. I'm ready to be hurt again. Yep. Because I just there's something about Star Wars that I cannot, I can't quit it, and I don't want to. Like there's no part of me that's like, yeah. oh yeah, I just need to stop doing Star Wars stuff. But every time, to your point, something comes up, I'm always like, oh god, is this going to hurt me? But I'm going to just, I'm going to dive that's in. That's why I'm just praying. I'm like, I'm like, just if a card game, I know that they have, I know that they have the rights right now, and that makes me so sad. Because I want anyone other than FFG to come out with like a collectible or even a living card game would be awesome for Star Wars. I would Wars. love a, a Star Wars living card game. God, yes. That would be so nice. And at that point, I would actually be okay with FFG doing it because that's, their, that's what they're Jesus. good at. They're so yeah. good at LCGs. Just you give imagine me... like an Arkham Asylum style Star Wars game? The, I, I don't know if you've ever played the Lord of the Rings Arkham card Horror, game. Arkham Asylum? Arkham, Arkham Horror. Horror. Thinking, yeah, Arkham, Arkham Horror. Horror. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, but th like th the thing that blows my mind about them is that for everything they cannot do right, for everything that they mm -hmm. absolutely butcher, they have Arkham, they've got Marvel Champions, and they have Lord of the Rings, the card game. All three of them are LCGs, and all three of them act are wildly different in how they feel and play and the experience you get playing them, and they all feel thematically correct. You shouldn't win Arkham Horror. When you do, you should be surprised. Like, if you win, you should win at a cost. Like, you get to the end, and you're like, well, Jeff died, and I've got, I'm, I'm like, I have a problem. My brain, I'm basically nuts now. I'm like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because yep. I've lost my mm -hmm. mind along the way. But we got out. We made it out of the asylum. And then they were immediately like, yes, but now you're in the town, and there are occultists. And they are wandering everywhere, and you have to find them. It's like and you're hey. like shit. I think that they're rabbits. Like, yeah. god damn it. Like, yeah. It's, so it's it's it is super fun. I like and, that game a lot. But then in Champions, people sometimes you complain. Feel, yeah. Because you 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 feel like you always are capable of winning the game, and you like never lose. It's obviously very hard sometimes. Some of the some of the campaigns are super complicated. Some of the hero the villains are really hard. But you're heroes. That's what you're. You shouldn't lose if you're the hero. Like the heroes always win. Like they have to win. That's what they do. You got to work for it. That's they got to work that for it. Is like yeah, you're you're not you're not just walking blindly into a win. It's like yeah. you're you're. It's just not impossible. Like yeah. Arkham is or Arkham can be. And you feel like yeah, no. you feel like you're working hard. And then Lord of the Rings is cool because it kind of falls into like a middle zone where it is real hard. And some of the scenarios you actually accept that you know what we're probably gonna lose someone in our party along the way, but we're gonna we're get to the end. And yeah. yeah, like, but that, that's how that's, that's Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. People die sometimes along the way, you know, you got to do a funeral along the really, way. I would play the shit out of that game. Actually, if it was star Wars and it was like, you are a rebellion, like a rebel, like an infiltration group trying to get the death star plans or something. Oh, and it's like, you got to go. It's like, Oh my God. Yes, please. Yes, please. Which kind of hey. comes, com comes full back you know, full circle back to fab where I hope that PVE gives us an experience and something to do that just mm. is, is something, I guess that's, that's the question. If you could do PVE, would you prefer, cause these are the two things that people have thrown out. Mm. Would you prefer like something where you can go to a store and they'll have like a, an event you can go with a couple buddies. You do like a, almost like a dungeon crawl style thing. You try to beat this big bad, whatever. You get loot if you do it, or you get loot either way, but you just play it at the store and you get the experience of doing it. And then part of the thing is, once you're done, you report how it went and then they give you the loot, right? You get like cool, shiny cards, that thing, whatever. Yeah. Or 100% kitchen table where you buy the thing and then just... I think... So personally, I think it needs to be the kitchen table. Like what? what mm -hmm. is the point of their of the if, if lss is evaluating where is my target audience what is what is successful right now yeah. and what do those people that we have already succeeded in pulling in enjoy and it would make very little sense to me to look at that and say these people who like to go and be competitive we're not going to target those same people who we already have buying our product with a product that they will not like as much, generally speaking. Yeah. 
like if they do something other than like a kit that you can just purchase that is like a sub deck and a big bad that they release like a new kit every three months or something like that every Mm -hmm. six months whatever it is that you can just bring home plug in like the different decks or shuffle the three random decks that come in the kit and then the three different versions of this bad guy or the two different bad guys and the big boss or whatever it is like whatever that looks like if there's it's not just a kit that you can bring home and play i think that they are missing the point of it yeah because i think that there's people that want that type of thing they want to be able to like play this game totally with like because think of how many people out there that are like i like this game love to play it but i don't want to do like another if they make this like pve thing another branch of their op system and where you have to like go into stores and get experience and like you can earn this stuff it's like i get that that's cool mm-hmm. for like the grinders and the competitive players but like that's not who you should be targeting right yeah 100%. with this product so yeah i'd I, be shocked if they did do that but i would knows? love so the only thing i i agree that I think it needs to be an, an at-home playable thing because to your point, it needs to reach a different market. Tapping yeah. into the same market over and over again doesn't work. You start to actually alienate that group by over, yeah. I mean, like that's over what, stimulating them. What it would feel like is like yeah. you're tapping into the same market with a suboptimal product for that market. Yeah. If you do it that way. But yeah. yeah. But I, I, I would love a product two to three times a year in between sets if they mm-hmm. could if they could target it into lols that would be incredible the See, non i think you do it same time as sets really cuz i think that i i do because i think that that way when i'm when i'm joe schmo who's just like mm-hmm. looking forward to the next like hit event that i can bring home to like play with my brother and my kids or mm-hmm. whatever it is and i'm going in and i'm seeing the marketing for like the other like the main set like the where you got other cards too like i think the purpose of this kit should be to do like the magic thing where you are trying to gateway drug people into more of your product yeah and i think that doing that at the same time allows you to pull people in who are like i'm just gonna go pick up the set because it came out and it's super cool and it's like it's light and dark themed Mm -hmm. bad guy set where it's like you fight one of the these two different option big bads based on what your heroes are that you're going into the game with and it's a really cool mechanic and i can't wait to try it and you walk in and they've got the dust till dawn like set release Sup- yeah, stuff everywhere set. or whatever and you're like oh shit that's kind of cool too like maybe i'll grab a box or maybe i'll grab some packs or whatever yeah. it is to like maybe we can plug those into the big bad deck like there's there's lots of opportunities there yeah but i'm, I'm curious if if doing it like when they're going to target it when they're going to because i'm curious how they're what what their approach is going to be if they're trying to Mm -hmm. get because you to your point i mean it makes sense that you would want them you would hope they tap into other things and maybe that's how you get them connected is they play they love their they bought a a lexi starter deck they just like they just like lexi she's cool she's Mm -hmm. their favorite hero they want to play her against all the big bads with their friends who have their and it's their party right they they have they have their little party that they go Mm -hmm. on quests with and that that's what they want to do and then they they see how do i make i want to beat this big bad because it's really good and my little my little you know starter deck just doesn't it doesn't hack it it doesn't feel powerful enough and they listen to like some videos on youtube about like how to buff a lexi deck yeah and they're like oh hey okay that's the whole thing. Is it's a numbers right. game. Basically, it's, yeah. you just want to expose as many people to as many avenues yep. into your product as you can. And I think that isolating those branches, the more overlap you can have, yeah, the better. Because you I, want there to be overlap because some people will transfer back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you some people What you will don't do want is to have someone, a competitive player that only does this, only ever be exposed to that. Yeah. If you have additional products yeah. out there, you yeah. don't want the kitchen table person to only ever be exposed to the kitchen table thing. Yeah. You want them to be exposed to everything else because you might. I mean, that's how that natural growth works over time. But, I yeah. I would love to see. I don't need the the product to be driven by in store play. I think that that's a hundred percent incorrect to to I don't think only do in store play. I I think that that's that's a you're asking for trouble a lot of stores have very tight schedules as is to just get people in and have enough space i do however really really hope that lss does a little extra leg work and does a release style event for these things 
because I yeah. do think a release loot event would be incredible where they say, you know, it's the it's best played these scenarios are best played with 3 to 4 players and mm -hmm. And you can get a cold foil big bad yeah. if you come and play on release day. On release have day. Have those events happening at the same time so that you're getting that cross yep. contamination. Do do something. Get... Yeah. Yeah. Where it's the same weekend, right? Maybe not even at the same time. You don't do the it pre have to be at the same time, but you it's have... like yeah. you I want think... there to be general hype yep. within the store for multiple things when people are that are coming in for one of the things yep. are coming in because then they're exposed to the other things. Yeah, do the, do your pre-release weekends for both on the same weekend and let a store do one of each. So on a Saturday, they do their pre-release for the PvE and on a Sunday, they do their pre-release for the actual set. That would set. be cool. I think that that would be like best case scenario. That's yeah. what I would like to see. But... It, it would be a dream because it would also not, you wouldn't, you would have more people playing the game, more people going for the experience, and then you wouldn't have stores running. It's it's good for stores. Like like to your point, it's good for a store if somebody comes in and goes, "I'm here for the PVE thing," and then they see the set up on the box, like, "Oh, that looks cool," and then they realize, mm -hmm. "Oh, there's Ranger cards in there. I like playing Ranger. I'm gonna play against I, the I've big only bad." I've played a handful of games. Like I really yeah. like Ranger, though. Oh, Rangers in this set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. just give me like six packs of it. I'll open them before the thing, and they go, "Oh, this arrow seems awesome." And they slot it into their deck, and then they they're like, "Oh my god, that arrow is incredible. I want some more of it." They buy three or four more packs. It's good for the store, good for the experience, creates mm -hmm. more market. And honestly, we've said we've we've always been big proponents of the fact that whatever it takes for LSS to keep existing, as long as it doesn't feel predatory, I'm fine with right. I, I don't mind. I, I think people sometimes get really, they get all, they get their upset about a stupid, like they, they think everything is predatory, like selling things as yeah. predatory. Like they assume that they wanting to make money as predatory. It's yeah. Like, okay. It, I, yeah, I don't, take it easy. I understand like there are, predatory companies out there who just try to make money epic games got sued out the out the ass for for Fortnite being predatory because they basically made it too easy to buy stuff and kids were just buying stuff and literally millions of dollars in revenue was coming in because they just you couldn't return things you just you bought a skin and then like your kid bought a skin and you're like oh my god you spent how much money on v bucks it's like I didn't know what I was doing. They didn't like. It's just some some poor little seven year old like clicked on a button and just spent like fifty bucks of their on their mom's credit card and bought a bunch of e bucks. They didn't know, so they they got sued for it and had to. That's predatory. You make it too easy to get stuff. You know that the people that are buying your product or use accessing it don't know better, and you don't have some sort of exchange or refund system. Yeah, you're being predatory. But a business saying like, "Hey, can we create another revenue stream?" is not predatory. Like. That's not print. Oh. That's business. It's it's good business. I get it. I don't understand when people get upset about that. Like Blood Bowl three, the video game came out. People are upset about the fact that it costs money to buy things that you can only get, but they're aesthetic things. Like I put I I don't. Why do I have to buy a helmet for my one player and then buy it for other players? You're like because because it's how they organized it don't buy yeah. the helmet if you don't want to buy the helmet it's not needed to play the game it yeah. doesn't give you anything it's except like, for a helmet well, like. i've i've played marvel snap and have had gotten great enjoyment out of marvel snap for what four or five months at this point and i have spent mm -hmm. exactly zero dollars everything that yeah. i do has been through just slow grinding through the game we've been grinding up for gold and i'm at the very beginning i wanted to spend money i remember yeah and you guys talked me down and i was like yeah you're right this is not I'm going to stick to my guns and not spend money. And it's been great. I've got like yeah. 5,000 gold, like just picking up every once in a while, like the yeah. shit that, that you want. You, you get a, get a variant here and there that you like with yeah. your gold. And I don't, but I don't, it's because I don't particularly care that much about having all the variants for everything. I do have like a weird I'm thing like where seven cards short of a full collection, except for the series five cards. Yeah. But like, and I've spent no money yeah. at all. And, and I get to play basically whatever deck I want. It's and like, I like, okay. I'm a big fan of uh, in classic my 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 tag in that game or the whatever the title or whatever is foil mm -hmm. foils only. I just got that one literally yesterday. I just fucking pulled it's, that one. It's it's the one it's the one that I've had forever now. I have a ton of them, mm -hmm. but I only use the foils only one because whenever I really like a deck and I play it like, over and over and over, I finally got Venom. I took forever to get Venom, and then hilariously, like the next day, I got Null. 
it's like oh my god, oh my god. This is, i want null so bad it's such a cr- like that deck is so silly and the, the shenanigans you can pull off on like a turn six yeah. where you spike your death down like death is zero nulls at like 30 you get venom mm-hmm. on like like sinister london or bar sinister bar sinister venom is the stupidest thing ever yeah because he ends up being huge and then null is huge and then death is free and at the end of the game you just casually drop like 50 between two mm-hmm. it's so silly but i like when i do that when i really like playing a deck i really like playing the destroy deck always have liked it even before i had the best cards for it i spent a bunch of time um just upgrading to where all of the cards mm-hmm. in the deck are the the infinite i just like infinity I want them all to be the shiniest version of it because it's a stupid thing that I like with my with my card things. And mm-hmm. I like nonsensical, over-the-top stuff. We talk about this all the time. We play Blood Bowl. Some people get a single team and they buy like the cheapest board that they can and they use the pre-existing dugouts and they don't do... No, no, no. I printed out little 3D printed block dice and I'm going to put them on little tokens, like the little, the small 25 mil bases. I'm going to base them. I'm going to paint them, get them all set up. And those are going to be my reroll tokens for on the board. Nice. So I can, I'm going to, so I'm going to start doing now that I'm, so I, this has never come up on the podcast, but I am, I'm taking courses right now for sculpting and I'm going to, when's your birthday? Yeah. May. May. So for everybody's birthday, I'm going to give them a free sculpt of whatever they want. And it's like, if you're like, I want this and no one has like a, the model that I would really like, I'm like, cool challenge accepted. I'm going to try and make that shit. And it'd be good for me to like do shit outside of what I just want to do. Mm-hmm. But also you guys get like a 3d model of whatever yeah. you want. I'm like, so think of what you want. Oh, I was yeah. gonna ask you guys anyways because I'm at the point now where like I've got all of the knowledge. I just need to start fucking around with stuff. Yeah, you just so, need to start doing it over and over and over until you oh, get. Yeah, yeah, now it's now it's the repetition mode. Yep, getting faster at it and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I I love that stuff. I love all the over the top stuff. So I've been doing it in Snap too, and I've been able to do it without spending mm-hmm. any money. I just max rarity, you know, basically max rarity infinity decks because because I like it. Although now I'm trying to it's slow a slow grind to try and get null there. Nolan Venom, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, I got two cards that I'm trying to slow, slowly work my way up. It's, dude, it's, I've been playing, so I've, um, I got She Hulk really early, like when she was series four or five, I can't remember. Yeah. But I just got her to Ultra, so I need to spend 500 now to infinite her, and I am six cubes away from that, and I have been playing that deck, my She Hulk deck for four or five weeks now yeah and i just like i'll switch back and forth but i cannot get the cubes to land on her it's fucking infuriating i'm like i'm only playing this deck now because I, I like the hazmat one that's yeah fun. oh my god the the <laughs> so much negative fun. nuke i that's my deck i, I call got n- absorbing man too so being oh, able to go like dude i love that line where w- wong into wong into mystique and into then hazmat. hazmat into absorbing man yeah and then on the absorbing man turn six you can also drop blue cage so yeah. it's like and then you just uneg all your side of the board it's fucking awesome yeah i i love to just i won a game the other day where like my total was like negative 41 or something stupid mm-hmm. because i just had one location mm-hmm. and they had all their locations full so i only won because they had a bunch of negative power and it's yep. you know I, I i just think yeah all those dumb decks are my favorite thing to do i like yeah. just stuff that's Again, I love the periphery of games. It's like, here's the rule set. It's like, where's the thing that plays over here? I like the thing that's like right on the mm-hmm. edge that doesn't the canos, really play. The snotlings. The snotlings. The, yeah. the hazmat. The hazmats. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else is trying to win by getting lots of power. I'm just trying to win by getting you to have less power. <laughs> dude, I just, dude, I played. You will never be so invested in a thing as like 10 sessions into playing D&D. Like you playing like a little sorceress gnome that like just loves casting fireball and shit and going nuts like like you just fucking eat that shit up dude all right i'm here for it i've already committed (laughs) to it so that's all i got yeah that's all i got too so um we've been going for a while what are we at an hour 15 ish okay that's not terrible not bad it's a good episode it's a good length people enjoy listening to it or they won't enjoy listening to it i never know Or they'll hate it yeah they'll hate it they'll love it or they'll hate it and we are uh we're fine we talked a lot of fab early on we did so yeah. So there. Yeah. 
we're Hope still everyone's a, happy. Still a fab podcast. Get over still it. Still a fab podcast. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Everybody, thanks for, thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for, uh, as always, tuning in. I always say, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do it. But in an hour in. We need to. We, just, it has been two years, over two years. Mm-hmm. We need to put that at the beginning. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tonight we're talking about yeah. if we actually cared. But if, we don't yeah. So I just don't. Yeah. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, don't. I mean, if if you listen every week and you haven't subscribed, that's fine. Thanks for listening every week. We still get to see that yeah. you listened. And if you comment, even better. We appreciate it. I, I love when people comment probably more than anything because I, like, I, it's a thing I do on Fridays, usually Friday afternoon, Friday midday. I, I go check out all the comments. And, the yeah. Like read through everybody's comments. So more than like and subscribe, you don't even have to do that. Just comment. Tell us what you think. I love hearing input, Fuck seeing what people again. think. Yeah. Fuck liking and subscribing. Don't even do that. Don't. Just comment. Yeah, Just unsubscribe comment. and only Jeez. comment. <laughs> yeah, if that's what it would take to get you to comment, unsubscribe, and, just, and that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but if if nothing else, come hang out on Sunday, uh, ten thirty a.m. Central Standard Time in the U.S. We are going to we've got our spoiler, and we'll be talking about what spoilers we've seen. Uh, I've got like an hour to talk before I have to go play a Blood Bowl game on Sunday, and I got to try and. With another one so i've got an hour to talk about fab on a live stream so come hang out it would be fun would be a good time so we Probably appreciate you i'm on boy duty oh you're boy so, duty so, yeah. so we'll see we'll figure it out it. yeah Chelsea's busy, but i'm i'm game i just yeah. might have to pop in and out every once in a while we'll see whatever happens whatever happens happens that's how we operate so <laughs> we're very planned and organized but everybody yes. thanks for hanging out with us and uh we'll see you next time